Hey everyone, it's Matt here with Night Run Studio, and we are more or less at the end of this part of our NPC system and ready to launch into our quest system. However, before we go there, there's a few optimizations and improvements that I want to add to our system. In this one, we're going to look at four things we can do to make it run just a little smoother. First of all, getting rid of this strange animation that happens when we walk past a player and he starts walking on a treadmill. Next, we'll make it so that our end button can be accessed by just pushing a button and not needing to click it with the mouse. Third, we're going to give it a little bit of optimized control over our flow of conversation by making special one-time dialogues as well as making it so that dialogues for, say, the end of a quest can delete all of the ones leading up to the quest. Finally, we're going to get rid of the host of singletons that we've made in the last few scripts in order to optimize and get a system that's going to run just a little smoother. That's where we're headed in this video. Let's get started. All right, so fix number one is the treadmill situation. To fix this, we're going to head into our NPC Wander script. And if you scroll on down, you will notice that in our on collision enter method, we have this start coroutine here that pauses and picks a new destination. That in itself is not a problem, except that at the end of that method, we call the animation to walk. This is actually a really easy fix. All we need to do is go to our on collision enter method here, and at the top, just check to see whether or not this script is enabled. If it's not enabled, we're simply going to return, as that means that it's disabled and we don't want it to run its logic. Here you can see that we can walk by the NPC all we want, and he no longer gets on his treadmill. All right, problem number one out of the way. Next up, we've got this end button that shows up whenever a dialogue comes to its close. However, the only way to access it right now is with our mouse. We want to make it so that the same button that advances and starts the conversation can also end it. Now to understand what's going on here, I'm just going to click on my event system. Anytime you add a canvas or UI element to your scene, you will automatically get one of these. And you'll notice here that there's a first selected. Normally, you could drag a button into this and that would automatically be selected. However, because our dialogue options are generated at runtime, depending on the conversation, we can't just drag it in there. So we're going to do this by code instead. So to make this happen, we'll go into our dialogue manager and just scroll down to our show choices method. Here is where we're creating the end button in the first place. And once we've done that, we just want to make it so that we can actually click on that button. So here we're just going to call event system and it won't like that for now, but don't worry, we'll fix that in just a second. At this point, we'll just type dot current dot set selected game object as we want to just pick which game object is going to be the selected one. Here, we're just going to use choice button zero as that is where our end button is currently located. At this point, I can right click and with quick actions, I can tell it that I'm using unity engine dot event systems. However, if for some reason your ID doesn't allow you to do that, you can just go up top and type the namespace in yourself. Now back in Unity, you'll remember that in the event system we're using the submit button in order to actually press the button. If we go to edit project settings and then head to our input manager, you can find your submit buttons. I currently have two buttons labeled submit. The first uses return or joystick button zero, which works for our mouse. The other is enter or spacebar. I actually don't need all of these, but I'll just leave them anyways as they're doing no harm. But I'm going to set K as my positive button, as that's the same button I'm using to interact with NPCs. Now when we get in the game, it's going to sort of work. However, when we press enter or interact to end it, you'll notice that the end button goes away, but the conversation stays there. That's simply because right now the same button that ends the conversation is also, since we're near our NPC, restarting that conversation from the beginning. So let's head back into our script. So we're just going to solve this by introducing a bit of a cooldown between when we end a conversation and when the next one can start. We'll make a private float called last dialogue end time, and then we'll also introduce another float for the actual dialogue cooldown. I'm going to set mine at 0.1 seconds. Now, in our start dialogue method, we'll just do a check. Here, we want to check if time.unscaled time minus the time at which the dialogue ended is less than our cooldown, that means that only 0, 0.0 something seconds have passed, we definitely don't want to continue, so we'll just type in return. If that's not true and enough time has passed so that our cooldown is over, we'll allow it to continue. Next, we'll head down to end dialog and just make sure that the last dialog end time actually gets set when we end that dialog. So we'll set it to time.unscaled time. Now when we get in the game, you can walk up to the NPC and mash that button as many times as you want, and it will end the conversation properly and you can just restart it and end it again if you like. Next up, we want to give a little more control to our dialogue flow. You can notice that if I complete all of my NPC's quests, collecting the items, visiting the green hills, and talking to both of his brothers, 
and then I go back and talk to Purple Bob again, things don't quite work as intended. Now he'll first notice that we found his items, then he's gonna say that he, we found Blue Bob but that we need to talk to Yellow even though we already talked to him. Then he notices we've been to the Green Hills, and then he just gets stuck there, not noticing that we've actually talked to both of his brothers. And this is just because right now the way our dialogue system is set up, if we do one of these little mini quests at a time and then return, it works just fine. However, when you try to put them together, it doesn't have a way to distinguish priorities. So we're going to fix this by adding two new features to our dialogue, and we'll head into the dialogue scriptable object to do this. To stay organized, I'm just going to put a header for these are control flags. The first will be a public bool called remove after play. We'll also make a public list of dialogue scriptable objects. We'll call this list remove these on play. And here I'm going to just add the using system.collections.generic namespace so that our list will work. At this point, we'll head into our NPC talk, which is where we check for new conversations. At the moment, we simply loop through all the conversations and look for the first one we find, which has its condition met. It then gets loaded as the current conversation, but removed forever from the list, meaning we can never go back to it once we've moved on to a new one. Now we want to keep the logic of prioritizing top conversation, so we will set the first available conversation to be our current conversation. However, this is where we're going to use those new variables we created. First of all, we want to remove the conversation if it's one time only, so that it never gets repeated again. We'll do this with a quick if statement that just checks to see if this convo is marked remove after play. If so, we're going to remove at this conversation, which will just grab whichever one we're currently looking at and take it off our list. Next, we want to check to see if this is a quest completion dialogue or something like that that's designed to delete other dialogues that just wouldn't make sense anymore. To do that, we're just going to check to see if this convo dot remove these on play is not null, meaning it, there's actually some content there. And we want to make sure that the remove these on play list has a count that's greater than zero, so at least one. If those things are true, then we're just going to do a for each loop, which will loop through all the variables. We'll call them to remove as there are things to remove in the conversation, remove these on play list. So we'll just loop through the list. And for every item that we find in it, we're going to get that conversation. And then we're just going to go remove. And here we'll just put in to remove, which is the variable we were just looking at. So that will just remove them from the list so that we don't get old, outdated dialogues showing up anymore. At this point, I'm just going to introduce a little more complex naming convention to help us keep our dialogue scriptable objects organized. Here, I'm going to start with the speaker, Purple Bob, but I'm going to mark the dialogues that are sort of quest type dialogues as quest. We'll then put a descriptor after it, like comment box and like button, since those are what's needed. Then, for the one that happens after we've completed the quest, I'll put the exact same name, but with underscore complete at the end. This is going to help to keep our conversations located at the same place in our assets folder and we'll also just make it a lot easier to understand how to read these as we get far more quests into our game. I'm just going to go through and mark all these dialogues in a similar fashion with the name, whether it's a quest, a description, and then if it's a completed version we'll put that in as well. I'm also going to add a non-quest type dialogue here which I'll just call of type default and this one's just going to be a basic greeting which is what he will default to if there's nothing else for him to say. At this point, we'll put our new variables in place. So I'll go to the find brothers complete one. And when it's finished, we wanted to remove all of the conversations to do with his brothers. So I'll just drag those into this box here. I'm also going to want to click remove after play as I only need him to play this one the once. Then we can just remove his thanks for talking to my brothers conversation. Next, I'll click on the like button complete one. And again, keep its required items, mark it as remove after play. But then I can get rid of the conversations that lead up to it. My Green Hills complete one has no precursor conversation, so nothing to drag there, but I do still want to remove it after play. And finally, greetings, I don't want to remove or have it remove other ones, it's just the fallback, so we'll leave both of those empty. Now we just need to order our list, so I'm just going to drag out the inspector here, add in the greeting, which is a new conversation we didn't have before, and then I'm just going to reorder these. Remember that the ones that are at the top will get highest priority, so any that are dealing with completion should go above the conversations that precede it. That way we'll always prioritize the completed one and then delete those underneath it if they no longer make sense. I'm also going to put the fallback, our greeting, at the very bottom as once all the others are gone we do want it to fall back on that dialogue. Now we're just about ready to run with this, however I'm just going to go over to Yellow Bob as he had some conversations as well and his ordering no longer makes sense. Right now his greeting, which is actually poorly named, it's actually the one he says after you've met his conditions, so I'll just quickly rename that. 
This one should actually be a quest where finding his blue brother is complete. And then I'm just going to make sure that the completion dialog is at the top so that it plays first and then defaults to the other one. All right, now when I get in the game, I can talk to Bob, see that he needs his epic items. And then if I were to go and collect all those items, take a little stroll up into the green hills and then talk to both of his brothers, I can now go back to Bob. He will notice that we found his items and delete those quests. You'll notice that we visited the green hills. However, you'll notice that now when I talk to him, he goes to greetings. He never mentioned that we found both of his brothers. Now the root of this problem is in our dialog manager where our start dialog is gated by that cooldown. Now the good news is that makes it so we can never play dialog while the cooldown's happening. However, back in NPC talk, we're still calling check for new conversation even if the cooldown's running. And check for new conversation is what removes outdated conversations. This can be fixed fairly easily. We'll just head into the dialog manager where we're going to make a public bool method called can start dialog. This is simply going to check to see whether or not our cooldown is over and we're allowed to start the dialogue. We'll do this by actually borrowing our time logic here. And now we're just going to return the result of time unscaled time, so the amount of time we've been playing the game, minus our last dialogue. And here we actually just want to check to see if it's greater than or equal to dialogue cooldown. We can now head over to our NPC talk. And now when we press interact, we're just going to check to see if the dialogue manager is allowing us to start a dialogue. If so, we will run both of these. That way, if we can't start it, it won't check for a new conversation or start it. With that all done, we can get into the game, grab our items, visit our locations, talk to our brothers. And now when we head over to Purple Bob, we will get to hear all three of his completion messages, after which he'll default back to his greeting. Finally, things are working. All right, we've now got a lot more control over the flow of our conversation. The last thing I want to do is about optimization. In the last three videos, we've added three new singleton scripts, our dialogue manager, our dialogue history tracker, and our location history tracker. It's starting to get a little busy with singletons around here, and singletons are great. They make it really easy for scripts to access each other, but what you really don't want is for every script in your game to be yelling at each other all the time. Instead, you want a really clearly defined structure where certain objects act as hubs that the others can talk to, and the information all passes nice and orderly. In our case, we're going to achieve this through our game manager. Now the game manager is a script we added in our persistence mini series. If you didn't follow that one, don't worry. You can just create a new game manager script now. And all you need to do is make it a singleton, adding the instance line at the top. And then in the awake method, making sure that we enforce the singleton pattern by making it don't destroy on load or destroying it if instance is not null. At this point, all we're going to do is just make a reference to each of those three singletons, one public dialogue manager, a public dialogue history tracker, and finally, a public location history tracker. What this is going to do is mean that this one instance, our game manager, will give us access to all of those other ones so they don't need to be instances themselves. We can then head into each of those scripts, remove the instance reference, as well as the enforcement in the awake method. Just be careful when you get to the dialogue manager as we have some additional logic that you'll need in awake, so don't get rid of the entire method, just the instance enforcing lines. You'll return to Unity to find a whole host of errors. I'm getting eight of them currently, and we're just gonna quickly fix those. I always like to start at the top, and this one's gonna take me into the Dialog Manager, which is trying to talk to the Dialog History Tracker instance, which doesn't work. To fix that, we'll get rid of the instance part, and then just add GameManager.instance at the front. That way we can look at the Game Manager singleton and get the tracker from there. I'll then move to the next error, and again, just remove the instance part, and add GameManager.instance at the beginning. When you get to NPC.talk, you'll notice that there's a whole bunch of these referring to our dialog manager, so we'll just get rid of the instance and add GameManager.instance in front of each of these as well. It looks like I just have two errors remaining in the dialog SO, so I'll quickly fix those. Be careful not to erase the exclamation mark at the front of these, as you do want to make sure that it's only if the location history tracker does not have visited that location. With all those changes, we can now go to our game manager. Mine's in the persistent objects drop down here. Just make sure that it's turned on. I do want to persist my dialogue canvas, so I'm going to drag it on here so it'll go with me from scene to scene. I'm then just going to drag the dialogue canvas into each of these boxes as the dialogue manager and both trackers are found on that object. 
All right, I hope you found that one helpful. I know that wasn't super exciting, but it does give us a tighter, more controlled NPC system and also sets us up better for the future with some optimizations. In the next video, we're gonna start the quest system proper. Hope to see you in that one. Until that time, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. Cheers.